let me know which topic you want me to revise so also i'll share that link for yesterday session so yesterday, yesterday we were actually talking about a database connection i think you know that right database connection yes so you missed uh, you are actually missing from a reject salon right so i think you know that uh, database yes sir yeah that is what we are seeing yesterday so, yeah what what do you want me to revise or uh, any doubts in that so what is mangling what is called mangling mangling what it is have you seen that what is mean by mangling any guesses where we have seen this I think we haven't seen the mangling. Yeah. No, we have seen. We seen. No, they, they, I told so. Uh, this is called mangling, kind of. Or oh, you remember private variable? What is mean by private variable? Yes, sir. Uh, what is mean by private variable? Uh, private variable, the name will be hidden. They use uh, start with underscore something. Like underscore. Like it should not be visible outside the class. Okay. Yeah, is it underscore or double underscore? Double underscore. No, single underscore only. I think. That is protected. Double underscore. That is a private variable. Okay. Yeah, that is called mangling. So, uh, exact that is not exactly mangling. The mangling is what? So when you, you when you say double underscore, what will happen? So this is a private yeah. variable. It doesn't have scope outside class, right? <laughs> so you don't have any scope outside a class. But if you want to access outside a class, what to do? When you say double underscore, you say double. attribute error, right? Uh, class. I need to replace it with. A wonder or a single underscore will be replaced with underscore class name underscore. So this is called mangling. Got it? The indirect re representation. Understand? Yes. The indirect representation is called what? Mangling. Got it? So this is called what? Mangling. The indirect representation. Okay, and um, what is called unpacking? Using single star in list. In list or in list or uh, in list, which okay. can be the object iterable. Uh, in that place, if you use star means uh, it will unpack that values in that iterable object.
So is it a list only? Is it only deal with the list? Or dictionary double star. No, for single star. I trouble also. Pardon? I trouble. I trouble. Yes. So it is a deal with I trouble object. So single star is for I trouble object. So where it has a position called index. So an object which contains an index based position can be unpacked through single star. Is this a valid syntax? <laughs> but this is valid in the uh, latest versions. So in concatenation, have you tried this one? Uh, F string. I will write that F string. Yes, sir. Concatenation. So uh, will it work here? So Python 3.5. No, F string itself was introduced only after Python 3, right? Yes, Python 3.7. So here it says syntax error because it is not valid in Python 3.6. Okay, this from 7. Yeah, it's there. I don't know there. So what is F string? It's similar to format. So instead of uh, the formatting string. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So instead of uh, like writing the string and uh, giving the curly braces inside and giving the index and then using dot format, <clears throat> instead of that, just write F. And within curly braces inside the coach itself, we can. Uh, 
use the variable. We don't need to say anything. Just simply start with it. Welcome to you. Right? So this is called if string. So we don't need any dot format or a percentage, etc. We can simply keep it inside and start working on it. So this is called if string. So how about R string? But not still. What it means? This is I'll show you. So what is mean by? R means it's a raw string means so when I say uh, equal to or a single string so how many characters are there one two three four five six seven eight nine this is one ten level 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 it's 22 totally because the slash n means what escape character pardon escape it's a it means new line right it's a syntax for new, new line. line okay it won't be considered as a slash n it is means a new line syntax okay so but I want to consider a slash also in this means it is not possible. So because what happens when you say slash? So when you say slash, what will happen? What will happen? If you use slash, you can write the remaining part of the next line. That is the syntax. Yeah, if you want to continue your, your it is, this is for a line continuation. So if you want to continue your string definition in next line, but it should be in the same line, but just for a line continuation to make it uh, pip friendly. So pip friendly, pip eight friendly. So for that we are using slash. But in this case, is this a valid? Here it is not slash and it is only slash. You are not giving escape character, it won't show slash. You have to use double slash. Yeah, so if I say slash, what will happen? What will happen? Will it lead to an error? Only hi, hello will be printed, I guess. Oh, so slash should be present at the end, right? In a single quotes notation, even in triple quotes also. So this is means what? This is a syntax to escape line, right? Okay. So it will allow you to continue in a new line, right? So it should be at the end. So if you keep it in the middle, if you keep it in the middle, syntax error. Syntax errors, exactly. That's it. Hey, so it's, I think it's working five and three. But it will lead to an error, see. Using the wrong slash. No, it's correct on the backward slash. Okay, but it's okay. It won't consider it. It won't consider it.
42 leads to a syntax error. So to avoid that, that's why we are using R string. So R string means it will be the slash also comes in. So as like uh, see that uh, B is equal to hi slash hello. So what happens? The slash won't be considered, right? So when you say B is equal to R. R means a raw string. Raw string means everything will be considered. So this also will be considered. So even if it is a three, so this is for an escape sequence, but still it represents only only. So when you say B of two, zero, one, two, three, so it's three. B of three will represent the slash. So it is for an escape, they will print like that, but it will be what is what do you consider as 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 it is okay so r means raw string so it will take take whatever you are inserting it look like that so even in like um spin i'm going to say the same stuff with The same one, but here it takes eleven because slash and n also consider as a new uh, individual characters. Understand? That is what R means. You get it? Yes. Sir. So R means for to define a, a raw string. Okay. So. B means it's a binary string. To define a binary string, we're supposed to use B. Okay. So even uh, in uh, yesterday also we have seen that uh, yesterday or day before yesterday. Yesterday I think. Yeah. So you know to open a file, it should uh, require a WB, right? A write more in binary kind of. There we have to create a data as a binary. So it's up to you. So if you want to create a binary based data, we can use this. Okay. And um, have you heard about complex numbers? Yes, sir. So, what is the syntax for that complex number? What is the syntax for complex? So, uh, your variable or a value should not start with the number, right? Sorry, uh, should not start with the number, you know that. But complex number is a valid. So, what is that complex number? 3x, 2x, kind of. It's ij. No, not an x. It is ij. This one was valid. 1j. J. Not an i. J is valid complex number. So, you can say 1 plus 2j but uh, when you use anything else it will lead to an error but a number with j will be considered because it's a complex data type as like an integer this is a complex data type when you say check that this is a complex data type understand so j alone will be accepted in a value declaration so uh, along with integer so how to list out all the built-in function available in python a simple one how to list out the available how will you find the possibilities yeah. okay then B here is fine, and then so where your built-in function was reside. I said it's a built-in, right? First, see where it is reside. Double underscore built-in. Yes, that's it.
so you can able to find the available built in in python okay so how to find the available modules in python this is this will help you to find out the built in right now i want to find out the list out a uh, modules the double underscore package hey Help of the module, like whatever you need. Modules. So this will install the pre-install and also user user install modules. This will actually install the pre-install and user install modules. Just press on the new. Pip is also. Pip freeze also give the module sir. That will list out. So it is uh, outside terminal. So outside your program, not inside your program. So this will help you to find out inside your program, inside Python program. This is a Python command. Got it? Okay. This is a Python command, and this will list out the all the available, where no matter whether it is pre-install or uh, built or whether it is a uh, um, come up with the package like a building or building modules or a user user installed got it so this will list out the complete modules pip trees will list out the user defined let's say pip trees and this is outside terminal so this is a shell command not a python script understand so this will list out what user install alone you won't find what is pre installed Okay. So this will store the water all the packages was installed by the user with the help of pip. Understand? So I have installed these much of packages through pip. That's it. This is what pip trees will list out. Got it? Yes. Sir, is it is it possible to restrict? Say suppose in a Linux in a shared server many users are be available, right? If I'm creating one user module, can I restrict it to use it by myself alone? Like it cannot be, it should not be shown to others. Pip trees. Pip trees. What do you mean? Hello. Hello. Uh, it, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. And also, I want to know, like, the, from basic version to till the current version, like from one version to other version, what will be the changes? Like you showed recently, showed right, like uh, uh, format and all. Like. Okay. Is there a uh, link where we can directly say, okay, this is the version. This is for the next version. This was developed and this that was. That is what I said. Is, that is, you you will find it all the stuffs in pip. I told you right. So everything will be listed under pip. So what are the deprecated what is added newly? So everything was listed in the pip index. You have to go through. So what in each version? So they all list of the uh, all release. So go to the release. What is included? So in the version numbers, they have included. So what is there? In September five only they installed the release to three point five point two. So two days ago. Sorry, so four days ago. Okay. So this much of Add-ons was there in Python 3.10 versions. Here you you have to check through that. Understand? Yeah. This is what you asked, right? Yeah. So anything, anything.
what this operator means power is it power yes power, power. power. what is it in that uh, no 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 uh, sorry this is a bitwise operation i think bitwise okay for power it will be double asterisk for power two asterisk we have to say double asterisk for power okay so hint this means xor xor operator okay xor means 0 1 10 so if it is different digit then it will become this a 1 so 10 1 uh, the last see that 0 1 10 so you have to say 1 0 it is 1 0 1 is 1 so the answer is 3 if it is uh, Two x r four one zero and one double zero zero one zero one double zero again zero one one it is might be six yes So what is operator overloading? What is operator overloading? Have you heard about it? So that at symbol is for a matrix multiplication. So but for that we need to create a class and we need to customize it. So then it's there. Sir, at is used for decorator, sir. Uh, that is, uh, we'll see that decorators. So here it is. So we are doing that multiplication. Sorry, uh, between the numbers, right? So It is like a, it will going to perform something like a star slash kind of it's an operator. So what I said was decorator starts with at and followed by a function or a class name. This is the simple for symbol for that, like a static method. It's a decorator, okay. And uh, by default it is says underscore mat mul. So this is what it it is refer. What I ask you, I just ask you.
operator overload operator overloading yes operator overloading overwrite the default function of an operator customized correct yeah so to override the functionality of your operator okay so for the plus we all know that double underscore add double underscore okay so this is already for plus That is correct, but I don't know why it's not working. So this is the syntax. So this symbol uh, was introduced from Python 3.5. So to do a matrix multiplication, so we'll get a result for a matrix A and B. So I don't know why it's not working. So we tried near machine, so whether it is working. So this is for a matrix multiplication. This symbol. So this is not there in Python 2. So it was introduced from Python 3.5 series. For the operator overloading, um, by default, see that my class doesn't uh, here it it has so class B. So it doesn't have add. So if I say B plus, what happens? What happened? The yeah. error. What will be the error? Type error. Type error. Is it right? Because uh, that cannot... add add is the, uh, not there in class B, so we won't be able to use plus symbol. So this object does not support operator plus. So it is type error unsupported operator because this object does not support this operator. So unsupported. Understand? So what to do if you want to overload that? We need to include it. So we need to. Include that add in our class. So what is our class? It is B, right? So in the class B, we supposed to say that. So add a constructor. So, if you want to overload operator, we need to include that method for that. Okay. So, what what you want to overload actually? So, if I want to overload a plus, what I need to add? I need to add a method called double underscore add. So, then only you you can able to you can able to overload yours. Okay. So, next thing is instance.
So it is difficult to understand as of now. When you start practicing, you will get you get through it. So I written, I'm instantiating that is this. So it says this. So by default, when you instantiating a class, so here I'm instantiating. Uh, I have added a method called plus. So uh, this class supports addition. So this class support addition. But anyway, you know, while instantiating, you will get something as an something like that. So if you want a string, what to do? So your class instantiation will return something like that, right? So uh, if it is a class A, it will return something like that, and a class object, the class instance object. But if you want to print it as a string, what to do? If you want some representation or a notation, what to do? You have to dot repr. Repr or str. Repr for developer. So for to list out string, we have to use str. So both we have to use both str. Return something hi and say hi and repr. Return self dot str. Okay, when you instantiate, you get a hi. But is it a class instance or a string? This is what string. It's a class. It's a it is not a string. It is a class instance. I said it is a notation. That's it. It's just a notation. See, it's just indication. It says what it says. It's a class in it's for a representation. It says that. So even I have explained you in detail so why we need this. So I will explain once again if you want that. So why and where we are actually using that is here. So he, the, you will relate these concepts when you start working on that domain. So what do you have to understand? So 
uh, here it is so here i'm using str and repr representation repr for a developers str for a front end so in front end see that uh, this is what privilege class right so in privilege class i'm clicking that so we all know it's a class right so depends on user input it will going to return what a class instance right so class instance will look like this so your input might differ like uh, say for example when i say class a in it a name self dot name equal to name and uh, without anything what happened we have to pass some name right uh, let's say prabhagar prabha it look like this i'm going to change it is it look like this but you never know so is it possible to identify which class contains the name prabha which class contains muzammil no right uh, you need to store into some variables like this and uh, you need to check this check through this right but the class is in this so with the help of class is you you never know what it is right so to avoid that uh, mis misconception that's why we are using str method to indicate this class instance for this input this class is instance for this kind of input okay see that see all of these names are derived from the class instance but i can able to differentiate oh this class is for artist this class is for dev this class is for tm etc so you understand that so if i disable this both or str so if i disable str this also going to rise in error because this is depends on this so i'm going to or i will simply disable both let's see what is going to happen okay i will replace re uh, refresh this page yeah now we won't able to find out the class object right right so if you want what to do you need to click and for verified right as like this see, see here i'm having a class instance if you want a, uh, which name is belongs to this i need to what to do i need to say dot name then only i can able to find it out understand to represent that we are using str method have you understand why we need a str so now i don't need to go through uh, each and everything so for, i simply enable both so now i can able to find a class instance by its name alone so that's why we are using str this is for a representation purpose so we understand why str is required hello sir yes so this has a relation between this so just before we are seeing something right there is a relation here what happened so when i add something i got a class instance object so i never know what it is that why i need to include this so i think i missed missed it so i need to add that's why i'm explaining why we need a str method okay so how you understand why str method is required hello yes sir yeah so but the difference between str and repr is a yeah, repr so uh, if i don't have this i simply return this okay with only repr see that what is going to happen nothing happened because i told you right str for a front end so end users str for an end user repr for developers so developer in the sense in the back end So not in a friend so uh, even when you say hi it doesn't reflect here so uh, i enable str and i'm going to disable repr see this will work so you will get a name the name will work because because repr is not for our friend uh, end users so you will easily differentiate with just uh, str alone got it now i'm going to do the same thing here let's say class a
now it is not working so i need to add Got it? Because this is a developer, right? Have you understand the difference? In a front end, so, so for end users, we don't need a RPR. So even it is even without RPR, it is working here. But for a developer to verify in the console and all, so we need an RPR to represent that. Got my point? Yes, sir. Why we where we need it? Okay. So for end user, we need a STR to differentiate which instance it belongs to. For developer, if you want to find it out, we need RPR. We need RPR. Even you can, uh, uh, STR is fine. So if it is STR, you need to convert it into string. So like that, I will delete that. I will delete it. Now when I say that, it looks like that. I need to convert it into STR. You will we'll get it. Got it? So this is works with the help of STR method. Okay. Is it confused? I will clearly show you one more time. A class name. Self. Comma. Name. So or a better name. I will give you a better naming. See it's a class student. Okay. And. Uh, Diff. In it, it means dot name equal to name. This marks so I'm having marks as a dictionary just consider. Okay, one is a proper so here I'm returning a list with the marks just assumes it is same same just assume I'm deriving from a database okay and it can be something like that and then no matter it, it can be a list of dictionaries or anything just I'm mean, just for your showcase I'm just seeing showing that So this is my marks. Now what I'm to do? Just say diff results self return. What to return? Self dot marks of self dot name. Got it? Now when I say Class instance. Just assume this is my uh, student name going to list out here. Okay. And when I click that student, it will go into list of these student marks. Understand? Just assume in that way. Now, when I pass a student name, that is what Prabha. Okay. What happens? It looks like that. I never know what it is. Okay. In next instance, I'm going to pass Sendil. It looks like this. I never know. Is this belongs to whom and this is belongs to whom. But in front end, I have to showcase, right? Or oh, this is belongs to Sendil and this is belongs to whom? A uh, Prabha. Then only I can able to find out its marks. Let's say marks. I can get it. Now 
not calling it right sorry i made a mistake what to do what it says it says a type predict object is not callable where i made a mistake parenthesis it should be no i want to get a result what to do i am saying mark mark is what it's a dictionary i should have to give square brackets i need to say res method results got it now you will get it the marks but you never know whom it is belongs to and uh, for instance one you will get for symbol okay so see that you never know whom it is actually belongs to that's why we need some representation string representation this is how it look like so what to do then if i want to make it and what to do what to do rpr rpr or if it is a front end just say str correct yes So I need to add str and rpr. Converting the list into spaces, there is in the even order. So I have to add. Return. Dot name to identify which instance it is belongs to whom. So I'm getting Prabha. This is in front end, so it says Prabha. Okay. When you try to check it from a coding, so it says you you need a RPR. Okay. So I can easily identify. Oh, this is belongs to Prabha. There, right? So even I can list it out here. It says it is belongs to Prabha. It is belongs to me. Kind of. Got it. That's what we need. str even you can represent both at the same time let's say like this listen just with instantiation so your instance will look like this way got it that's why we need str and rpr this is the difference between str and rpr methods any doubts in it now we'll use the same stuff here in operator overloading so in operator overloading i'm saying str To represent my results, Okay. 
see syntax error. Why it is syntax error? You missed a comma. Exactly. Now, what is the error? Main error. Very good. So it says one comma two. Okay. And uh, in C two, I'm going to say B of B comma four. Okay. We got a two instance. Got it. So I uh, overrode my operator. So even you can uh, do a lot with it. Let's print what will get. So you even it might get confused. So what is going to get it? What we are actually getting? Let's see. I will disable all these things. So for your better understanding, so I'm going to first instance in my class, and you all know uh, plus will work because we have added an operator already method inside. So when I say plus, I'm passing a number in it, right? So let's see what's going on. I'm getting ten in object. Understand? Are you get it? How this works? Yes, sir. So after what you are actually sending plus. Will be received here. You understand? So what you actually sending after plus symbol will be received by OBJ. Okay. Now what I can do? So while instantiating, you will get some results, right? So I can change that. So. While you're printing it, you got this. Okay. So what to do? I can say, um, what does you want to do? Name it. I'm getting one input x. Okay. Setting it into constructor. So I need to pass a number twenty. Okay. And here I'm passing ten. So by default, we hope it might return thirty. So for what to do? Just say. Self dot x plus obj. So the answer will be what? Answer will be what? So uh, have you understood what I'm doing? I'm saying uh, I'm passing a twenty as a class constructor. I'm setting it to x. Next, a plus method will be triggered. So here I'm adding both a twenty plus ten together. The answer will be thirty, 20. right? Thirty. Twenty plus ten. Uh, Twenty plus ten. So even you can overload your operator. So when you say plus, but I can I have changed it. The answer is what? Negative minus. This is called operator overloading. What is operator overloading? Changing its behavior. So while plus what to do? The answer must be added together, right? The answer must be added together. But here I'm changing its behavior. I'm detecting that. Understand? Bro, yeah. hello. Yes. Uh, in the first class, uh, x equal to self dot x plus ins dot x. Right. In that okay. line, how the ins dot x will work? Because the ins is a value uh, okay. which is uh, we are passing uh, while instantiation. Uh, so x will be considered as an attribute only, right? So it will raise a uh, error, right? That uh, ins does not have uh, attribute so like x. It won't work. It will. So here actually you are saying two instances, two inputs. So it will be clubbed together. It will be clubbed together, and um, so here I'm saying plus. So in after plus, what I'm passing? I'm passing a p2. Got it? It's a class instance. So one is what? Self x comma y is my one three, and here I'm getting two four. Right.
this is what it's a class instance because i told you right so what you are actually sending after plus symbol will be received by this object got it so here i'm passing my class instance understand the difference so uh, here i'm having a p1 and here i'm having p2 so in p1 what i'm having my x is 1 and y is 2 in p2 my x is 3 y is 4 understand so i'm adding both x together that is what this is my x this is my x so answer is 4 2 plus 4 is 6 so 4 comma 6 is my answer so if we pass one more uh, value in that p2 means it will rise error right pardon uh, if we uh, if we we are passing one more uh, value 3 like comma it. 4 comma 5 like that like it that. will rise yes, it is because we are using only one we have only two variables x and y in add so it will rise error. okay okay it's up to so for that we need to add a, one more parameter to this user okay so okay call operator so here i'm sending only one number just the 10 alone but here that's why i may mean it as an instance because i'm passing a class instance instead see that uh, p1 plus p2 i'm adding two instances together so this is the instance so you can pass any type of object right so in this case i'm passing a class instance but here i'm passing a value so value i can use it directly but instance i have to fetch that value and then only I can able to add it together. So x x y y. Got the difference? Yes. This is about REPR and SPR. So you will get. To, so you will uh, relate with it when you start working on these kind of topics. So that I mean, in the project at all. Okay. So in tomorrow class we'll talk about internet scripting. So it will be more interesting. So interesting. So here we'll talk about um, how to send the mail through Python, what is FTP, and uh, I will explain you so the basics of what is JAMS, so what is that frameworks. I tell you, yesterday I told you right ORM, so we'll explain so what is ORM and all in tomorrow's session. Okay, we'll see in transcripting tomorrow. So any doubts today? Can you share the uh, codes yesterday we saw? Uh, this one? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, sure, sure that uh, database program right yeah yeah i will keep it and this also. also yeah sure okay yeah thank you thank See you tomorrow please bye thank you